to have a, a young man that grew up in this house. When I led worship on that end, he sat about right there. And um, he uh, met Christy, and they married and had two gorgeous daughters. And uh, he's been special. He was very special to Pastor Hank and um, very special to me. And we are so excited. This podcast, when he did it two years ago, was one of the biggest podcasts this church has ever had um, as it went out everywhere. We're excited to hear this testimony. Please welcome the incredible Chuck Martin to the stage. Woo, 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 woo. Don't you start crying or I'll start crying, Pastor. <laughs> Life is one great, big, beautiful mess, isn't it? And I am so glad that I get to go through this life with you guys, my family. Amen. Our uh, church family, our family in heaven, it's all a part of just being together. It's just life. Um, I want to thank you guys for, and I'm not going to cry, I'm gonna, I, I want to thank you for the last 15 weeks of prayer, and we've stayed in close contact with Pastor and with Christy, she's on video right now looking at me. Ashley's got her on, on the iPhone. Hi, honey. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to talk about you. <laughs> she said, go on. Go on. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, a little bit about me and Christy. I met my soulmate in 1993. Uh, she met hers in 96, but it was too late. She was married to me. Um, pastor, um, pastor asked me to write this testimony down in a book, and I apologize. I haven't, I haven't written it down yet. Uh, um, Christy told me that I'm a, a writer for the ages, mainly ages four through eight. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and I apologize that, that Christy's not here physically, but you, you see, she's heard me speak before. She doesn't really care for my speaking ability. But today, uh, we're going to talk about my testimony, um, the faithful God of an atheist. I know that sounds uh, contradictive, but that's what we are going to do. You know, um, when God did come to me after I had become atheist, Satan held a meeting and said, we've lost a good man today. Um, because I was a, I was a good atheist. Um, I, uh, I tried to convert as many people as I could. I said, come on over to the atheist side, and we can't offer you anything. But that's, I'll get there in a minute. We would have meetings. We said, come down to the front. Uh, nothing, nobody's going to do anything, and nothing's going to happen, but, but it's okay. Um, it started out... <laughs> I've never heard that sound come from Pastor Todd before, have you? I want to. I want to. I want to tell you. Uh, I want to start out though and tell you this because we are. Life is life is difficult, and you think that it's going to get easier, and it doesn't always get easier. Sometimes it gets tough, and 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 we get confused about it. And by the way, this is a Seventh Day Adventist Bible. Uh, they're not using it today, so I took it. Um. um It has it. It has a lot. I, I've got it marked here. I'm not used to having this in my hand when I do this. Hang on, just one second. This is. I'm adorable. This. This is going to be worth it. Uh, there we go. Matthew 10. I've. I had a bunch of uh, sticky notes for these things, and uh, they fell out of my book when I was getting ready. Now, now listen to this. You may you. This is how encompassed that we are with the body of Christ. If you know Jesus, this our church, we believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He lived a spotless life. He died on a cross for our sins, and he rose on the third day, and made a way of salvation for us. If if you believe that, you are our brothers and sisters. Uh, 
everything else is debatable. Something we debate uh, a lot of things, and we disagree. We agree to disagree. Something you know, um, I have uh, Matt Decker and I were talking this week when he was fixing my air conditioner, and he and I agreed to disagree because he can't always be right. And uh, um, but listen to how how safe we are even though we don't know how safe we are if you have jesus if you've invited jesus into your heart this is how safe that we are i thought that was it let me look one more time but the reason why i want this this to start out here is because um it is uh oh it's john that's what it is it was john uh, oh, I'm not a I'm not a preacher, so you don't I, you can't judge me by that. I'm I'm a speaker. So, and, and Jesus answered them. This is John 10 verse 25. And Jesus answered them, "I told you, and you do not believe me." So he told them, and they didn't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So it's not what you say to people; it's the works that we do in the Father's name that bears witness of us as believers. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Not only are we in the Father's hand, we're in Jesus' hand. But there was a time in 2008, 2009, when the market, I don't know um, if you guys have, I know a lot of you are too young to know, but the market just crashed. And I was a general contractor. Uh, Christy and I had uh, three houses that we had built that we were speculating on selling and so we paid four house payments for three years and um, then we ran out of money and um, and so I thought because I had prayed I, I went to church Sunday morning Sunday night and Wednesday nights if I had sinned during the week uh, <laughs> paid tithe, did everything that was supposed to, but I couldn't hear. It was like heaven was silent. I couldn't hear anything. But, but we started these houses by faith, but it was my faith, but I believed this is what God wants me to do so I can make more money. Uh, and my eyes were, were on God, but it was also on the money that I was going to make, on the riches. Um, but I found out I was, uh, it, it, it wasn't happening the way it was supposed to because I heard Malachi 3, hey, yeah, bring, bring all your tithes and offerings into the storehouse and prove me, says the Lord. That's the only place where God says, prove me. But he doesn't say, and I'll give you back money. He says, I'll pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. And, 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 and at that time, I was looking at it like, pour you out, okay, he's going he's gonna to give me money because I had seen... Um, pastors on on TV and things that say, "Hey, if you if you give a thousand dollars, God's going to give you bless you ten times that." And I always wondered why don't the pastors just give us the money and then they get ten times the. But it <laughs> evidently it doesn't happen that way. Um, so so I had done everything I was supposed to do, but I but I I had to give back those three houses. I lost it, and so I started thinking, well, you know, I'm. I know that, that I'm reading the Bible. I know I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I know that, God, I am doing everything that I am supposed to be doing, and yet heaven is silent. And heaven is, is I can't hear anything. What, what's up? What, I mean, just give me a direction. Just let me know what you want me to do. But I couldn't hear anything. It was just crickets. And... Um, so I remember the last prayer that I was ever going to pray as a Christian. I prayed, Father, it's just like you don't exist. Everything in my life is happening exactly like if you did not exist. If you were not real, this is exactly what I would expect to happen. So until you bring me 
a little wooden cross, I'm just going to have to say I'm atheist. I thought I would call his bluff. I thought he would say, oh, Lord, we can't lose Chuck in the kingdom. Let's, let's go right now and get him a little wooden cross. But that's not what happened. <laughs> Apparently, God can make it without me. <laughs> and I kept waiting. I, I waited. I, I knew that that was the last prayer that I was ever going to pray. And I, I thought, well, maybe it's, it's the denomination I'm in. Maybe it's, it's, uh, I, I, it should be, maybe I should start going to church on Saturday. Uh, maybe I should take some more wives. And then um, <laughs> I, I knew that one wasn't it. I, I, that, I, that, that was a thought that I cast down quickly. Um, actually, Christy and I, you know, uh, we actually were entered into the Guinness Book of World Records this year. Being thir married 30 years this year, 30 years. We've only had one argument in the entire 30 years, so we made the Guinness Book of World's record. We also made it for having the longest argument, um, a 30-year argument. Christy, you could have stopped me if you would have been here. No, she's at home resting. Um, it's uh, with what, what all she's been through these last 16 weeks, and uh, we actually can't can't be around a lot of crowds right now. She's going to make me, as soon as I get home, I have to go straight up, take a shower, take my clothes off, and put them for the cleaners because we got to take care of that little girl. Um, 30 years ago, um, Pastor Hank, the man who owned this tie until I stole it, um, initially, he uh, was our officiate at our wedding, and that was February 27th, 1993. And then February 27th of 2023, his beautiful wife officiated our wedding and renewed our vows 30 years. And I cannot believe Christy said yes again. Uh, we had to surprise her or she wouldn't have done it. That had to be what happened. Uh, so, so I've got us to the point to where, okay, I was, I was going to be an atheist. And I, was, and, and, and I was a good atheist, like I say. I don't know if, if you guys ever um, remember when you first received Jesus, if you got that, that uh, passion where you wanted to preach to everybody, you wanted everybody to be saved, and you wanted to talk them into salvation, and you, and you couldn't believe they were so stupid if they, if they, didn't, uh, if, if they weren't going to accept Jesus into your life. That's, that, that's crazy why they wouldn't do that. Well, when I became atheist, I had the reverse atheist uh, uh, the reverse conversion experience. I wanted. I couldn't believe anybody would believe in this God who who didn't come through for me, who failed me. And the people that believed in God, oh my gosh, they they'd lost their mind. They're crazy. But see, we're bound by language. Language is is a hindrance to us, and we have preconceived ideas, preconceived concepts, and it's not our fault. We uh, we're, we grow up that way. Um, it's um, first of all, let me tell you this too. Don't 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 argue with atheists. They're just people. Don't argue with atheists because science goes by facts, and we as Christians go by truth. Boy, that sounded good, Mike. You you want to help me? Oh, um, so we're not dealing with the exact same things. We say, well, why do you believe in God? We say we believe on faith. And they say, well, we'll prove your faith. Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can't prove faith. And science says, well, you, we prove stuff, but they don't. You can only prove mathematics. But they act like, well, we've proven that God doesn't exist. I know there's the story um, of the scientists, a bunch of scientists. They got together, and they approached God, and they said, listen, we don't need you anymore. Uh, we know how to make man, and we can create him, and, and so there's no reason that we need you at all. And God said, okay, well, well just show me. So they got down into the dirt, and they started uh, making a man. God said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You got to get your own dirt first. Yeah, I heard that. I didn't make that up. I'm not that smart. But that's... that. Um, it's funny because when when uh, when I was when I became atheist, um, a lot of a lot of my Christian 
believers, a lot of my Christian friends, talk amongst yourself. <laughs> I lost them, but it wasn't their fault. What are you going to do? Really, what are you going to do when every time you see somebody, it's like um, they're selling Amway. They're going, oh, man, you're, you're crazy. You're an idiot, you know? But there were a few uh, friends that I had that stayed with me. Um, Pastor Hank Davis was one of them. He would call me at least once every couple of weeks and to encourage me, of course. He told me. He called me one time, and he, and he said, Chuck, he said, uh, I have good news. I said, well, what is it, Pastor? Let me know. And he said, I, I've been reading the Bible, and there's not going to be any atheist in hell. I said, oh, that's fantastic. Where did, you, where did you get that? He said, well, because I've been reading it right here. As soon as they open up their eyes in hell, they're believers then. <laughs> Pastor Hank could get away with stuff like that. I laughed. That was the, I told that joke. I told that joke to, to my atheist friends. They didn't think it was funny. But, I mean, I, it, was, it was funny. That was funny. Uh, There's several things. He's, he said, um, and I think he's told this one to you. Can I tell, can I just tell, because I'm in a suit, and, I, and you know I don't normally wear a suit. Can I tell your cowboy joke about church and the, and, uh, the man that came to, to uh, church in his cowboy hat? And, yeah. So... <laughs> I, well, it's my joke, but I gave it to you, and I didn't know if you had told it before. Um, so, this is off the subject, but that's okay. I'm not a preacher. I'm a speaker. Um, uh, so, this guy, he comes to church, and he's in his Stetson hat, and he's in his snap-down shirt, long sleeve, nice dress, designer jeans, and his gator, uh, gator skin boots, big old belt buckle that has Texas on it, and he walks in, and all of the... All of the leaders of the church were sitting there. They were, oh, my gosh, this guy is so unprepared for the church and for how we're supposed to dress. And they said something to the pastor. Pastor, would you say something to this guy about the appropriate way to dress at church? And the pastor said, yeah, 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 I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. So after the sermon, the pastor goes up and he greets the guy. And he says, hey, how are you? He's great, great, great. He said, enjoyed your sermon, pastor. That was, that was pretty good. The pastor said, good. I got, I got something I want to ask you, though. He said, sure, ask me anything, whatever you want. He said, will you go home, and when you pray, will you ask God how God wants us to dress for church? He said, absolutely, Pastor, I'll do that. As soon as I go home, I will, I will uh, I'll ask God, I'll pray, and, and I'll let you know next Sunday. The pastor said, that sounds good, great. So the next Sunday rolls around, and here comes the guy, and he's in his Stetson hat, his snap-down shirt, long sleeve, Nice designer jeans, leopard skin boots this time. I made that up. I don't even know if they have leopard skin boots. Big belt buckle. And after church, the pastor comes to him and he says, Hey, I, I, I thought you said you were going to, uh, to pray and ask God what the correct way to uh, come to church, to dress for church. The guy said, Well, I did. He said, Well, what did God say? He said, Well, God said he didn't know. He's never been here before. <laughs> See, at least now you know how that'll go over when you <laughs> preach that. I want to talk to you a little bit, too, about riches and wealth, the, the difference between riches and wealth. I know we were talking about that in Malachi. Um, riches, riches are fleeting. Christy and I had plenty of money in the bank when we started the three houses. Before we lost them, we paid four house payments for three years. We ended up with a big goose egg at the end of that. And so the riches were fleeting. The, but true wealth has nothing to do with riches. True wealth is two things. It's laughter and it's relationships. Those two things are true wealth. And I'll tell you why. When we got our diagnosis a little over two years ago, I had a millionaire friend of mine. He said, hey, why don't y'all go down to Gulf Shores, Alabama, and uh, stay in my million dollar uh, condo down there just for as long as you want to. And I'm like, as long as we want to, you, you mean we can move down there? And he said, well, within reason, you stay as long as you want to. We went down there, stayed a million dollar condo, 10 days, actually it was nine days. It was gonna be 10 days, but I got tired of all of the relaxation because I can't handle relaxation too long. And we came back, guess how much it cost? $250 cleaning fee. But I did tip 
my friend because we left the balcony door open so we could hear the ocean at night. But that is true wealth. That would have cost $5,000 to stay there, and I got it for 250 bucks. That's wealth. I've got, I, I have access to a half million dollar camper from another friend of mine that he will set it up. He's a, he's a millionaire. He's a millionaire. And he'll take it wherever campground we want, set it up, drive it, whatever. And we can, we can stay in, in the woods. That course now, the woods are not really mine and Christie's thing, um, except we can watch it on TV, but we really don't, don't go out into the woods much. But it's available. That's wealth. That is wealth. That is the, the blessing that God will pour you out that you can't contain because I couldn't have that camper at my house. I would have a heart attack if I had to pay the HOA dues on that million-dollar condo, just the HOA dues. I didn't even have to pay a utility bill, but I did. I tipped him $5 because, to help him with that. It meant a lot to him. Uh, or at least that's what he said when he crumbled it back up and threw it in my face. <laughs> but our language is limited. Um, our, it, there, there are things that, that we say, and we have preconceived ideas about um, how things, uh, what words mean. Pastor Rhonda, you are beautiful. You are absolutely beautiful. Pastor Todd, you are beautiful. You are absolutely beautiful. Does anybody have know the difference in, in the concepts that just went through your mind? Does anybody think that Pastor Todd is as beautiful as Pastor Rhonda? Well, I know, besides, besides Misty, Misty, Misty has something to say. Okay, one person, but one person doesn't, it doesn't prove a theory. Uh, but he's handsome. Uh, but the, that's the preconceived idea. We, we, can't, we can't go on preconceived ideas um, because we can't defend God. We, there's nothing that we can do to defend God. I don't know why we feel like that we have to defend God. It's like, oh my gosh, how did God ever make it before I was born? You know? He needs me to defend him. And we get so... Self-righteous. I know I was self-righteous before I lost my faith. I was self-righteous. I, I knew exactly how you should live your life. I could tell you what was wrong. I could tell you uh, why your finances weren't where they should be because I had read the scripture. I had read this. For those of you, for those of you under 25, this is called a book. This is what we use before Google. Um, it has words in it. doesn't have any emoticons in it, but if you think emoticons are new... Go back to the ancient Egyptian uh, language. They had hieroglyphs, so you're not really doing anything new. But I knew exactly. I could tell you. And boy, I thought I was it. When I lost my faith, I knew I wasn't anything. But I didn't understand that I was still in God's plan. Pastor Hank said, Chuck, you know, God ordained you to be an atheist. And I'm like, what? What? I, it, that, it doesn't make sense. Why would God ordain me to be an atheist? He said, your life's not done yet. It's not, your, your story's not told. I said, Pastor, you don't understand. God does not exist. He said, I don't have any problem with that. It, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm wanting to argue, Pastor. God does not exist. He said, yeah, that's fine. I don't, have any, I don't have any issues with that. And I said, what are you saying? He said, I'm telling you, if you go somewhere that doesn't exist, God will be there as well. Yeah. Well, you may like that, but it ticked me off when he said that. Because <laughs> I didn't know how he could make it without me. Our job is just like in, in John chapter 10 that I, fi I finally found that scripture is in doing our works. And what, what is our work? Our work is to preach the gospel. It's not to convince people that we have the right, correct interpretation of God. We don't do that here. We're a both-and church here. We're not an either-or church. But that doesn't... And, and do you guys know the difference? The either-or churches? Um, the either-or churches are either God's going to move 
with us singing verses 1, 2, and 4, uh, or, or that's it. We're, he's not going to move today because we don't want to sing verse 3. Nobody knows verse 3. That's, that's an either or church, but that's okay. That's where they are in their walk. That is not, those are my brothers and sisters, and you better not talk bad about them uh, to me because I love them. But we're a both and church. We, we will accept both dancing down the aisle, screaming, uh, shouting, as long as it is in order and decent. You can praise God however you want to. A lot of people wonder, why do those weirdos turn the lights off during worship? It's so you can focus on your relationship with your Heavenly Father without being distracted and without caring if anybody else is looking at you because our visitors are going, okay, I'm, where's my wallet? Uh, what are these people doing? Uh, you know, we enter in. Jesus inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. That's uh, Psalms, uh, verse 22, 3. God inhabits the praise of his people. Well, during that time, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, praising God, I guess you can you can say so I wasn't being inhabited by God and I you know you think it's hard to be a Christian in Cleveland Tennessee try being an atheist in Cleveland Tennessee <laughs> it it's rough it's rough and 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 I don't blame the Christians there are still plenty of Christians they in this city that will not talk to me to this day because they can't trust me because of the bad teaching that they had received some in their life that, hey, atheists just want to, they just want to sin. They really know there's a God. They, they just want to sin and do all the bad things and steal and wreck cars and, and, and all that. That's not what atheists do. There's a lot of, I joined an atheist group. I mean, it wasn't based on anything. It was just based on an un, not believing in, in God, but it was an atheist group. And they were some of the nicest people that I've ever met. Um, they had uh, good reasons for their unbelief. Um, and it was just kind of a, a fellowship thing that, that I did. But the number one complaint they always had was, well, I don't believe in God because this person right here is a Christian and they did this and uh, this Bible is full of mistakes. That, that, that Bible is just wrong because we're taking it at, by the facts and, and why would this happen and why would that happen? And it was all in anger and it, was all, and it all boiled down to um, somebody being hurt. But now... Um, since we've, we've had our diagnosis, uh, Christy has had Christian television and I, um, on in our living room 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You want to talk about trials and tribulations. Try listening to Christian television 24 hours a day, seven days a week and thinking you're going to like every pastor that's on there. Well, I was... Um, I came downstairs. My office is upstairs. I came downstairs, and I happened to hear one of the pastors, and he was saying something. He had purportedly been an atheist before, and so he knew all about atheism, but he said something that was incorrect, and, and I knew it was incorrect, and I didn't want him to, and he was telling his, he was telling his, his flock, hey, uh, this, is, this is what you can say to an atheist. Well, I didn't like it, so I was cussing him, and Christy walked in. Oh, yeah, I cuss. Um, <laughs> And, and I'm not a, I'm not a preacher. I, I, I'm just a speaker. Um, and so I was cussing him. And uh, Christy walked in there and she said, "Chuck, um, you know he can't hear you, right?" And I said, "Yeah, I know that because if he did, he would get down on his knees and repent with for what he was saying about that." And she said, "You know." Jesus said, "Chuck, you need to love your enemies." I said, "Jesus has not met some of the people I know. He couldn't have." That, she said, well, you've got to promise me right now that you're going to pray for your enemies. And she's my, she's my girl. That's my baby girl. So I, I promised her, yes, I promise you I will pray for my enemies. And I do. I pray for my enemies. And every time I pray, I, I pray, take them home, Lord. They're ready. <laughs> and 
now she knows it because she's on there. And I'm not changing it. That was, you just said pray for them. Um, but because science deals in, in, in facts and um, we deal in truth, it was very confusing to me because I never told anybody what my fleece was. I told people that I had a fleece, that I, that, that I uh, um, put a fleece down, um, but I never told them that it was to bring me a little wooden cross because if I had and I would have gotten a cross, I would have never known if it was humanly inspired to get me to come back. So I never told anybody um, because any of us could have done it. Any of us could have could have just brought me a cross, a little wooden cross, and and during my atheist time, I um, Christy and my relationship was um, of course she had married a Christian, but I had became an atheist, and so that wasn't the deal that we had set up. So she and I had trouble. Um, Ashley, my daughter here, that's that has Christy. On, on the I, iPhone um, made, came up with a very good point. She's, she's my uh, favorite child um, <laughs> because she's here today. My other child is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's on, it'll be on the podcast. It'll be on the podcast. Um, I, I asked Ashley, I said, I said, why do you believe? And, and why would you even believe Christianity over any other? She went to a private school they had uh, histories of religion and everything. Why would you even be a Christian out of all of the choices that, that there are in the world, of all of the different religions, of all of that? She said, well, Dad, I, I'll tell you why. Because every other religion that we've studied, it's man trying to make it to God. She said, and you know, and Christianity is the only religion where God is reaching down to man and he's done all the work. And so that's why I chose Christianity. And that was when Ashley became my second favorite child. That was, she was demoted at that time because I didn't have any answer for that. That was a good answer. That's one of the things that distinguishes Christianity from any other religion. God's done all the work for us. Well, Fast forward to, I left Christy and the girls. I moved out. I couldn't take it anymore. Um, I was an atheist living in a Christian house, and the Bible says don't be unequally yoked for a reason. Um, it's, it's turmoil. So I left. And I had a little studio apartment, one-bedroom studio apartment. And uh, I was in there. I'd been gone four months. I was asleep one night. And um, I just felt I needed to get up. It wasn't like, you know, I, my experience with God, everybody has different experiences that we have with God. My experience with God is kind of on the silly side. You know, I, I always think of the weird things like... Uh, like like Joseph, you know, uh, uh, Jesus' stepdad, uh, Joseph saying, Jesus, close that door. What were you born in a... Oh, well, maybe you were born in a... Born. And, I, and I could hear Jesus saying, you ain't my real daddy, you know. Uh, that's kind of the relationship that I've, I've always had. But I just felt something to say, get up. It wasn't a spiritual thing. It was just, I need to get up. I, there was this closet. It's a louvered closet. I knew that the return heating and air conditioning uh, was in that closet. And, um, and I'd never opened that door the whole four months that I'd been there. So I, I went and I opened that door. And for some reason, I just reached in. And I pulled out a little wooden cross. I fell to my knees and I said, you are real. God, you are real. What, what are you doing? I've, I've denied you. I have this scripture. I was in his hands the whole time. And he came to me. And it was, I, 
this is where language stops and, and experience begins. It was, it was like the waves of an ocean, but it was golden, and it just started enveloping me just slowly, gently. God's a gentleman, just, just slowly coming over me, and all it was was love just pure love but it wasn't like love like I ever knew love it was love like I was loved no matter what I did he, it, it didn't bother him that I was atheist I, because he don't see us like we see us he looks at us through the blood shed from the Lord Jesus Christ and he sees you the way you are not how we see each other. Right. He sees us through his son's blood. That's right. And that, that love just enveloped me. I, I, I remember I looked at my hands and I could see, I could see every, every cell in my hands. Uh, I, I could see every one of them. It was all, and love was penetrating through all, all of me. And, and I, uh, Every question that I had, every question before I could even think it to come out, the answer came to me. And I understood that the gospel is the good news, that, it, that God is the God of love, that God is love. And our preconceived ideas of love falls so far short of what love truly is well after that experience and I'm cutting it short because there, there's 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 a lot of that that I cannot explain that they don't have words in English or in uh, there's not words to describe that experience and I don't know if it was two minutes or if it was two hours I don't know how long I was there um, but um, I the next thing I want to talk about is on the way I was taking my daughter Gracie who is my second favorite daughter to a basketball game and I was telling her in, in tears about the fleece that I had laid before God and that I had the wooden cross and I was telling and she was like oh my gosh that is so that is wild I said yeah it's crazy and so we were going to a basketball game where she cheers and um, we and and so we go to this this game and she's out there cheering and I'm sitting in the stands and well there's a guy uh, Chris Brooks he is a great friend of mine Chris uh, he came to me hunted me down at this basketball game and said you know the Lord just wanted me to give you this and guess what it was a wooden cross from a girl who had been sex trafficked in Honduras and on this little wooden cross was Psalms 91 he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and when I saw that I, I just started crying and Gracie was looking at me, and I held up the cross, and she started crying. And, and the school that she went to, the basketball team wasn't really a very good team, and we were behind 40, 40 points on the board. So when the opposite side over there saw all the cheerleaders crying, because she had, uh, had told them about it, and all of us in the stands were crying. They're like, man, they're a bunch of babies. You know, Maybe we ought to put third string in or something, you know. This is that's too much. <laughs> And um, and then fast forward another four weeks. I was in. I'm I'm a real estate appraiser, so I appraise houses. I'm also a real estate agent. Um, I have my real estate license. I could sell your house, although I'm a horrible realtor. Uh, because I spend all my time appraising. But my broker is here, and she is a great broker, and she can sell your house. And I also have another friend of mine, Miss Erica Allen, is here, and she is a realtor, and she sells a lot of houses. I got to know her from the amount of houses that she sells, and I have to appraise those houses. So uh, we have lots of choices. Um, but... Um, I totally lost my thought because I started uh, talking about business. But so, <laughs> so uh, I, 
I uh, was appraising a house in, in, in Ray County, and the man said, you know, you, you do all different areas, don't you? I said, yeah, there's nine different counties that I, that I appraise. And he said, well, maybe you can help me with something. And I said, well, sure, you know, what, what do you need? He said, well, since I've retired, he said, um, I've started a little ministry. And um, I, uh, he said, it's not much. It's not anything that, that uh, is any big thing. But I started making these little wooden crosses. I said, you, you what? Yeah, I started making these little wooden crosses and uh, I always, the Lord told me to make a cross a day. And so ever since I've retired, I have made a cross a day every day since I've retired. And I asked him when he started. He didn't remember the exact day. And I don't, I don't know the exact day that I prayed that prayer. But it was the exact same month of the exact same year that I prayed that prayer that this man started making little wooden crosses. And it was right then I promised. That's how I knew that it wasn't man-made. That's how I knew, because God not only answers your question, but he answers it exceedingly, abundantly, above you can, all you can ask or think. Not only do I have my little wooden cross, but I have wooden crosses to give away to everyone. Now, since... Uh, the last couple of years, I haven't been able to get in touch with that fella. I do have some of his crosses left here. Um, but all of these crosses, I want you guys to come up and take one of these crosses. Brother Chris, will you and, and Miss Christine, will you come up and, and um, get ready to, to close? This, the crosses themselves, they, they don't, there's no special power to these crosses. But the cross is, is the most recognized Christian symbol in the world. Um, I had a, a couple of other things that I, I can't get to uh, for lack of time, uh, but I know pastor's going to preach um, on um, a little protein called laminin, which is in the shape of a cross. And that laminin is the protein that holds every part of your body together. And also, do you have, Austin, do you have, uh, that's it. It's, it's three separate pieces to this protein. This is science saying this is the protein that holds our bodies together. We have millions and millions and millions of these laminin proteins in our, in our body holding us together holding us together that um uh that's colossians if you uh, just just write this down colossians chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 and and i, I know pastor will will do that justice but i also want to show you another thing i found that out after um long after i got my little wooden crosses but i want to show you one more thing science says we need facts and um, do you have do you have the Darling Galaxy? Do you have a picture of the Darling Galaxy? Edwin Hubble was such a great scientist. He actually created a telescope that could go far. And this is called the Darling Galaxy. It's the Whirlpool Galaxy. And this is light years into space. Light years. And, and you know, that's kind of silly. I mean, this is a little side note, but... You know, science says they don't need God, but they measure everything in light years. And what was the first thing God said? Let there be light. And, and it's called the universe. And, and what does that mean? One verse. The one verse that says, let there be light. But they wanted to see, they felt like there was a black hole right in the middle of, uh, uh, of this darling galaxy. See how it's whirling? See the whirlpool? Well, they believe there's a black hole in it, so they took a close-up with a Hubble uh, telescope. Put that up. Put the close-up up there. That's the close-up of the whirlpool galaxy. So I want you guys to stand with me. 
And I love that I exalt thee. Why don't we sing that? And, and if you feel led, come up and get one of these little wooden crosses. It's, it's just a little token saying, hey, if God can do this for an atheist, this little thing, my problems are nothing. Because we all have problems, and we're all going to as long as we're here in this earth. Because we are, we are just, this is, is just corruptible. This flesh is corruptible. But our spirit, as Pastor Tim said, our spirit last week is eternal. And we get them confused, but we're not going to today. I, um, Christine, if you will sing, if you will sing, I exalt thee. And if you want to, guys, start singing with us. Come up and have your little uh, cross. Pastor, if you want to come. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. He inhabits the praises of his people. I exalt thee. Oh Lord, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Feel free to take as many of those crosses as you want to. I have as many. If you have friends that you need to take them to, take them to them. but he's a great musician. These crosses are, are, I have them, we'll always have them at the church. Call, talk to somebody, we'll make sure that we always have these available to you. Um, Pastor, thank you.